was meeting with my counselor recently, and somewhere in the course of our time together, we were discussing some issue in my life, and I asked him, is it normal for people to, and he immediately interrupts me, and he says, is it normal for who? And I said, well, you know, is it normal for people to, and he interrupts me again, and he says, wait, wait, we're not here to talk about other people, are we? We're here to talk about you and who you are and what the next right thing is for you to do. So the better question is, is it normal for you? Now there's a story in the Bible about a man named Jacob who wrestles an angel. Now the scripture's not exactly clear who, who he's struggling with, whether it's actually an angel or whether it's a man or some sort of divine messenger, but, but they struggle hour after hour by the side of a river. And at daybreak, the man says to Jacob, let me go. And Jacob says, I will not let you go un until you bless me. And the man says, well, what is your name? Now this, uh, this question has a bit of history to it. When we, when we meet Jacob much earlier in the story, he's trying to deceive his father into thinking that he's actually his older brother Esau. Because it, in that culture at that time, the father would give the older son a blessing and now their father is blind, and so he's disguised himself as the older brother. And their father, Isaac, he senses something is not right. And so he asks, who are you? And Jacob says, I'm Esau. When we first meet Jacob in the story, he's trying to be someone else. Now his older brother Esau finds out what he's done, and he's furious, and he threatens to kill him. And so Jacob leaves, and he's on the run. Now in the ancient Near East, your name was more than just words. Your name was identity. Your name was reflective of your character, your substance. I mean, the very fiber that, that made you, you. Your name told who you are. So when this man asks Jacob, what is your name? The real question he's asking him is, who are you? I mean, how much of our pain comes from not knowing how to answer that question? Soon after his resurrection, Jesus is having a meal with his disciples, and he's talking to one of them, Peter, about Peter's responsibility to lead Jesus' followers after he's gone. And Jesus says to Peter, he says, Peter, feed my sheep, which is a way of saying, take care of my church. Jesus gives Peter this calling, this task, a vocation, something to do with his life. And then Jesus says to him, Peter, follow me. And what's Peter's response to the sacred holy moment between the two of them? Peter looks at one of the other disciples and says, well, well what about him? And, and Jesus replies, what is that to you? You follow me. We can all relate to Peter, can't we? I mean, we each have this unique path, a calling, a life God has given us. And Jesus invites us to be our true selves, and yet we get sidetracked, we get distracted, we get hung up on how we're different from her, or we aren't like him, and we end up asking the wrong questions. We end up asking, what about him? What about her? What about them? I mean, some people are smarter, and some people have more money, and some people are stronger, and some people have a certain body type. It's just how it is. We'll never live from our true selves when we're comparing ourselves to those around us. And like it says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Or like it says in the book of Wisdom, Job, it says resentment kills a fool and envy slays the simple. How much life do we lose when we're endlessly comparing and measuring, engaging ourselves according to those around us. When we're jealous of what someone else has or even who someone else is. The struggle of Jacob is the struggle of all of us. We're asked, what is your name? But at some deep, deep level, we're really being asked, who are you? You and I have pasts, families we come from, things we've done, mistakes we've made, and, and where we've been and what we've done has shaped us into who we are today. And so we have to embrace our story, our history. You, you don't have to be proud of it. 
but you must claim it because it's yours. I mean, only when we can own our own history for what it is, the good, the bad, everything in between, can we ever begin to answer the question, what is your name? I mean, do you wish you were someone else or, or something else you know, from that family instead of your own, with those abilities instead of the ones you've been given, with, with that body instead of the one that's yours? What is that to you? She has her path. He has his path. They have their path. And you have your path. You and I, we have limits. There are all sorts of things we aren't. There are all kinds of people that we aren't. Maybe this is why Jesus says to love your neighbor as yourself. How could I ever love and embrace someone else when I've never come to terms with who I am and then who I'm not. I mean, some people live their whole lives according to the expectations of others. Whether it's authority figures or family members, it's, it's as if there's this script that's already been written by someone else, and all they're essentially doing is just acting it out. Or others, they, they give their lives to the hopes and dreams and goals and plans of, of someone else. And so in the process, their identity, their life gets lost, or, or others are just crippled by guilt and shame. They believe that they've failed or that they've blown it and, and that these mistakes and failures apparently define them. And so they live with this sense that it's never going to be any better than this. If you need spiritual direction, if you need counseling, if you need a fresh perspective, if you need the wisdom of a mentor or the words of trusted friends, get it, ask for it, because there's nothing more important. There's this moment by the side of the river as the sun rises and Jacob faces this man who's asked him the question, what is your name? And Jacob answers him, I'm Jacob. He's struggled and he's been broken and he's done pretending. He isn't trying to be Esau or anyone else. Jacob has wrestled and overcome. Jacob is ready to be Jacob. He's okay with the life God has given him. It's actually at this point in the story that God then pulls him into his divine destiny as the father of a nation. It's, it's almost like God says, are you ready to be you? Because there's a lot of work for us to do here together. And it's written in the scriptures that we work out our salvation. Do you know some of the things we need to be saved from? We need to be saved from all the times we haven't been our true selves, all, all the times we've tried to be someone else, all of the lies we've believed about who God made when God made us. All the times we've asked the wrong questions. What about him? What about her? What about them? And we've missed the voice of Jesus saying, you, follow me. So may you do the hard work of the soul to discover your true self. May you find your unique path, the one God has for you. And in the process, may you find yourself comfortable in your own skin.